So what I've tried to do just now is introduce you to some of the key tools in building a pipeline, and those would be BLAST, Perl, and BioPerl. What I want to do now is provide you an example of working with those tools uh, in a marker discovery project. Okay, and I think once again, yeah, so once again I lost my, um, I lost the image that I wanted to show you, which was a flow sheet here. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to describe the project to you so that we're all on the same, at the same place. So what, um, the example that I'm going to give you is similar to the one that Heather gave you, except it takes a different approach. So we know that we have a resistance on chromosome 11. And we want to make use of our knowledge of, of chromosome position and linked markers to try to find more markers on the chromosome, preferably markers that are more closely linked so that we can use them in marked persistent selection. So the approach then is to take the flanking markers and use those to query genome sequence data. And so if we download the genome sequence, which can be done either through NCBI as a series of back clones or through SGN as, as the genome sequence, for the draft genome sequence for Heinz 1706 or for LA 1589, those are databases that we can then query. So the approach is then to query one of those databases with our flanking markers and pull out a larger piece of sequence that contains our flanking markers. And then use that to query with another set of sequences. And so this goes, we, we go back to uh, what I talked about early, earlier, which was the ability to create subsets of data out of existing data. And so what I want to remind you is that we can download FASTA sequences for a number of different varieties, right? TA-496, Microtong, Rio Grande, Rio Fuego. Uh, there's Ohio 8245 sequences buried in the Phytophthora data set. So we can download these and use these to query the genome sequence within the region of our flanking markers. Okay, so just an example of, of bringing in some of that data in FASTA format. Okay, and now we're, we're housing this information on our own computers, okay? And what we can do is we can make use of some Unix commands to take a look at that data. Um, it's, it's quite possible to end up downloading data that's um, of a size that's large enough that you're not going to be able to open it up and look at it even in a text editor. Um, so there's some Unix commands um, that come in handy at this point. And I, I just want to mention that we made available a cheat sheet of Unix commands, both on the website as well as in the book. Um, and for those of you that want to go pick up the cheat sheet later, this, um, this website um, is where you can go to get that information. Um, so one of the Unix commands that we can use is this grep command. And so the syntax would be grep-c and then something in quotes. And, and basically by saying dash c, we're actually act, asking grep to simply count the occurrences of what occurs between the quotes. Okay? And so if we were to use this command, for example, um, where we're targeting the file that was downloaded using like a persicum organism and TA-496, the number that we get is 116,711, which exactly matches the number that NCBI told us should be there. Okay, so that's a good sign, and it's an important quality check because sometimes when you're downloading data, um, if there's an interruption, you'll only download a portion of the data. You think you have it all. You've got a big file on your computer, but you've only downloaded a portion of it. Okay, so this is a way that you can get units just to double check that you have what you think you do. Okay, so again, this slide just summarizes the, the results of using the grep file on a number of different sets of data. Right, so each of these represents a set of data that we can now compare to the piece of DNA that we pulled out between our flanking markers. 